All right, we're doing it. We're going live. And uh, everybody out there, thank you for uh, joining me. This is the first, uh, I think this is the first live Let's Buy Boots I've ever done. And uh, I did it because I noticed um, a lot of people were into this series and I haven't done a, a Let's Buy Boots video in a while. So if you're out there, thanks again for joining me. Let me know if you can hear me, if everything's sounding good and looking good. Uh, it would be kind of worthless if you couldn't hear me. So maybe let me know, uh, you know, what's your most recent piece of footwear that you picked up? For me, my most recent is uh, some black Chrome Excel uh, diesel boots from Grandstone. And they made, they actually, I, I don't know if they offer it, but they made me one with a leather sole, which I was looking for. Uh, it's pretty nice. I'm actually excited to wear it. Uh, right. So today the, the idea will be uh, to talk about whatever boots that you want to talk about. So I've already received a bunch of great uh, suggestions. We've got Grant Stone on the list, Truman, Parkhurst. <laughs> Tuesday or Thursday, uh, we're going to go with Thursday boot, uh, Crockett and Jones. I've also picked out a couple other things. Hey, Marco, welcome. Good to see you. And before um, before we get into some of the boot stuff, ooh, Alden Colory Indie Boots. Yeah, drop your suggestions for what you'd like to talk about. Alden Color 8 Indie Boots. Let's see who's selling those. Alden Madison. I'll put that on the list here too. Definitely drop uh, a note of what you want to look at, what we want to talk about. And just like nerd out about some uh, boots and leather uh, just for a little bit. Ravello Alden Long Wings. Where can you get those? Alden of San Diego. All right, let's 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 check that out too. I want to look at these first. I know you can't see my screen yet. What's up, Double Trouble? Welcome. Man, those look great. Oh, you know what we should look at is I've always loved... Um, what's the name of the Alden place in uh, Hawaii? Leather Soul? Yeah, we'll, we'll take a peek. So I don't have a ton of time today. I'm uh, watching the baby monitor. Because my wife's out of town, kids taking a nap, and I wanted to be a, a dork here about some other stuff. Uh, let's flip over the screen here. I got to visit Alden Madison uh, Oyster. What's up, BFET? Greetings from Chicago, where it's uh, quite stormy today. So before we get into some boot stuff, I just wanted to thank everybody um, for supporting us on some of these Green Shell Cordovan items. Um, really meaningful uh, to have your support. I'm so excited for you guys to have these items. Um, something like this green shell cordovan Joy of the Fox is really, really special. It's not something that we can normally do because of all these layers of leather inside. Uh, so we were able to make a couple of those and uh, it seems like they've sold out. It looks like most uh, most things are sold out. Just a couple little things left. If you're into the green shell, um, today's the last day. I'm going to be turning this um, pre-order off. And then coming up next week, um, actually, let me see if I have some um, images. Coming up next week, I got something really, really cool. Um, I got some Color 8 Dublin uh, that's going to show up. Let me just see if I can find a little peek at one of them for you. Um, what's beautiful? The Color 8 Dublin is really neat. And they're all really cool. Uh, so here's a good, let's open it with the photos. Okay, so here's what Color 8 Dublin looks like. And I've had struggles um, with photographing the Dublin before um, because it's 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 dark, just like it, Color 8 Shell Cordovan is dark. And the way that the wax is finished onto this leather sort of reflects everything. It's hard to see the color. So we're going to do sort of like the same thing as the um, the Green Shell Cordovan pre-order, although these are already made. So we're going to offer some stuff next week. Let me get you to show you one more of this Capone. This is a really great color, and I've sucked at, at sort of capturing just like how awesome this looks. Um, in the past, I think this represents it well. It's very bright, so th this luster on this image uh, doesn't fully represent you know, how shiny it is. 
but man, the color eight Dublin we got is next level. Some of the best, some of the best skins I, I've seen. So that's coming up uh, hopefully Monday. Uh, and again, if everybody, anybody that's just joined us, uh, definitely drop in what you want to talk about, what boots you want to see. If there's particular leathers you want to talk about. I'm happy to uh, to do that. Clerico says Astroflex Bitflex boots. I've never heard of that. Uh, let's look that up too. I'll put that in the uh, the old searcher. All right, we'll check that out too, man. So interestingly, um, so today's April 30th. Tomorrow is, or today is the last day of uh, the Stitch on Patina Thunderdome. So I've been wearing a pair of boots for this occasion. And the goal for this was to show how different boots wear. And a bunch of people, I think there's a few hundred people participating, just wearing different boots, showing how they wear in. The ones I have are from Oak Street. So here's Oak Street's uh website i click their everyday boots here the ones that i've been wearing when did we start uh it's been a while uh october 1st so i've been wearing some trench boots from oak street these trench boots right here and i've been wearing these since october and i've really enjoyed them um i do have some minor gripes with them now that i've worn it for this long and i've worn them basically every day. I guess I'll go through that now. Uh, and I'll do a full sort of recap on my experience with these boots. I'll do it like a polishing video too, uh, to show you how they've worn in. Super, super comfortable is the headline for these. They're very comfortable. And I think it's a combination of three things. It's the, the fit to make sure you get your sizing right <laughs> from here. And my suggestion for all these brands that we're going to look at is probably reach out them to them directly to get sized. That extra bit of time you spend is going to save you so much trouble. Um, so the size is just right for me. I like the last on this it fits me well. I have a little bit of a higher instep and these uh, accommodate my foot nicely. The other thing that's super comfortable, two other things, the natural Chrome Excel that I have, it definitely has a unique ability to sort of form around your foot. It wears really comfortably. So I've actually had some Aldens before that were maybe a, a little too small. I mean, technically probably a size off even, but the Chrome Excel just really wants to work with your foot and I find it to be very comfortable. And then the last thing is the leather sole. So this is one of the sort of polarizing things for me. When I first started wearing this leather outsole, I was in incredibly excited about it. I found it to be really, really, really comfortable. It sort of reminded me of my thousand mile boots that I picked up over a decade ago with the original ones that came out with just the leather sole, with the leather sole. <clears throat> and I just always loved how comfortable they were. These super comfortable also, but I've worn through them pretty quickly. Uh, I think I wore through it in about four, like a little over four months. Uh, so it's kind of a bummer to to do that bit of extra work to go get them recrafted. So that's sort of my my only gripe uh, with the leather outsole. But I think I think they're great. I really enjoyed wearing these. Um, and the people from Oak Street will be able to help you get sized. Uh, I liked their I like the diesel boot or excuse me the um, <laughs> the trench boot reminds me of the diesel boot with the, that plain toe but they also have uh a couple other interesting ones on a different last uh where was it so this lakeshore boot i don't think these photos are doing a great job representing how they look in person and that's sort of a theme i've noticed on a lot of a lot of things probably things that we're going to look at today these things are very stylish in person. I don't find them to be that flattering um, through the pictures on their site. But uh, that's the other one I want to try uh, from Oak Street. All right. Again, like anybody want to talk about any particular things, um, let's get into it. So here's the first suggestion was Grant Stone. Oh, somebody wants to talk about fight. Let's put in fight on the list see if we can get to it. Fight boot. Do we have boots? All right. We'll get to that. So a couple of people have already suggested Grantstone. 
and I can see why they make an incredible product and the price is right. So to me, uh, that's sort of the headline about Grantstone. Um, some things I've noticed about Grantstone that may or may not be good for you. So they have a very, very roomy last, meaning your foot has a, a good amount of room to sort of move around in. So again, sizing is pretty important um, for all these brands, but I would suggest just reaching out to these guys. They'll size you directly. Uh, and they have a bunch of different styles and different leathers. It's it's a great thing that they got going on. Um, so they've got the brass boot here, which is sort of like my interpretation is that this is their interpretation of the indie boot, but it's tougher because of this, uh, this sort of lug outsole. It's much more of a heavy sort of chunky work boot, work boot vibe with that mock toe. And the indie boot has sort of propelled the mock toe, in my opinion, uh, into sort of the boot world. Uh, not a lot of people are super into mock toes until they see the indie boot and they go, that is very sleek and stylish. It's a really good look. So this is sort of Grant Stone's version of that. I think they have this, uh, a couple other sole versions here and a few different leathers. Let's look at, this color eight looks great by the way. Let's take a look real quick. That's a really nice looking color. And the one thing I've noticed that's that stands, another thing that I've noticed that stands out for Grant Stone is their clicking, uh, the cutting of the patterns uh, seems to be on a, another level. They do, it seems like they pay extra attention to have a good enough understanding of the material to know where to cut the best uh, parts of the hide for each part of the boot. So a lot of the times Chrome Excel, like we were just looking at here, this color rate Chrome Excel gets a bad vibe uh, or a bad rep because of how it creases sometimes. So people even have a term for it called the Chrome Excel lottery. <laughs> and it's like, oh man, I got a great one. The break is perfect. Well, like that's how it should be every time. You know, if if you're getting a boot that's not exactly what you want, you should talk to the, the manufacturer and see if they can remedy that. But Chrome Excel will have a, a nice, uh, pleasant break. And when I talk about break, that's where the toe sort of flexes with the rest of your foot. And you start to see pebbling or slight uh, creasing sort of right here on the boot. And Chrome Excel, uh, again, like can be sort of pipey and loose in the bellies and sort of like the armpit of the animal. So a boot maker would need to avoid cutting those spots. And it seems like Grant Stone does a really, really good job at uh, cutting the appropriate pieces. What's up, BFET? Oh, I haven't worn my natural shell Vibergs in a while because I've been wearing the um, the Oak Street uh, trench boots. So that that's really cool. Let me look at the sole. I always forget the name of the, uh, the outsole. What is this called? Like wedge? Uh, bah. Like they don't say. It's me embarrassing myself with the uh, the different words for things. I think I prefer. I don't know. Like on, for me, the brass boot's not my vibe. But I know a lot of people really, really like their brass boot. And then we have the Edward boot here, and the Diesel boot, which I have a few pairs of Diesel boots now. And I'm noticing a lot of these have that um, that micro stud sole, it's sort of in the day night style. Those are I find I found those to be really uh, well wearing. Um, I'm kind of into like the leather sole still, and they don't seem to have too many leather sole options. Here's one, and this is actually the one I have. Wow, they do have it. So this, I think this and those natural shell Vibergs are going to be the next pairs that I wear. But these, I have, I don't get a lot of compliments on my attire. But when I wear these, it's one of maybe three pairs that I have of footwear that people like compliment me on. Like, whoa, those are really cool. Uh, I love them. Um, they're very, they come 
they came to me very bright and shiny. Your yours might come bright and shiny also. Um, and as they wear in, they of course like get a little bit dusty. Um, but they're one of the again one of the three pairs I have that people compliment me on all the time. I had thought that I wanted a sort of stealthed out like black everything look. Uh, and then when I saw pictures of some Alden stuff that was all black everything, it looked a little grandpa to me. So there's something about this framing of the natural color of the welt here that frames out the black in a nice way. And then the leather laces, I should have mentioned this on the um, the Oak Streets. I've been really digging leather laces, uh, just a little bit faster to tie up. Uh, that is one thing that I struggle with is um, like every now and then I have to, well, every week I have to take my daughter to uh, daycare and pick her up. And the place we go to, I have to take my shoes off. And sometimes I'll just wear like little slip on sneakers that are junk <laughs> and just wear those because I have to carry a child and like take my shoes off. Something like all the leather boots, I just never really be able to like sit down and like tie my stuff. So I've been, that's been a struggle. Uh, but the leather laces seem to be a little bit faster and easier when you wrap it around the, the shaft. And I've been enjoying that. I hadn't done that before. Look really fancy when we buy for 370. Yeah, it's, a, it's again, like the Grant Stone stuff is a, a good, really good product and a really good price. So they got something special there. The um, criticisms that Grant Stone, I have a video on Grant Stone uh, where I interviewed Wyatt. Uh, and I still get comments every couple of days of people getting mad at Grant Stone for making stuff in China. So that's a criticism. You know, if you don't like stuff made in China, these are made in China. Uh, they also had this sort of split toe, the Ottawa boot. And I've never worn a split toe before. I think Alden calls this the Norwegian split toe. I don't know. Honestly, like that's not really for me. I think a lot of people like that. I've never really worn a Chelsea boot, but that looks, this Chrome XL one looks really stylish. They have some um, non Horween stuff too, like Dark Oak Rough Out, which is a cool looking suede here. It looks like an oiled suede, pretty shaggy look, so pretty uh, casual with a sort of more like refined last, it looks like. So that's neat. Uh, CF Stead, oiled, waxed, rough out. Yeah, that's a cool look. I like that sort of rugged vibe. And then they have a little bit more refined suede, like this, which is also Stead, uh, I believe. Yeah. So the Stead suede tend to be really tight and the nap is real fine. And that, that's a, a nice look. It's tough um, from my past history in, in the tannery world. Pretty difficult to get a very fine suede like a fine nap of a suede. So instead does a really good job. I think a lot of other companies use stead suede. Here's another Chrome XL. So um, one bit of information about Grandstone is they call Dune Chrome XL. Uh, that's really natural Chrome XL. And Crimson Chrome XL is really brown Chrome XL. And they have some crazy, every now and then they'll do like little pre-orders. So they have this ostrich. I think they originally started as like a special order. Uh, these, I like this gray of the Storm Kudu. Another really rough look. And they have the green Kudu. They got a lot of cool stuff. That's really neat. This blue. I think that's a good color. And they have good photography too. I, you know what, Oyster, you're saying um, the diesel boot with the black would look nice with a an antiqued welt or like sort of like a waxed and burnished welt. I don't disagree. I, I like the contrast of the, the one that I have. Where did it go? <laughs> so this is the one I have. The contrast of this in person is really striking and I like it a lot. I could see why you'd say you'd want a bit of a, a little bit more finish on it uh, but i'm telling you this thing is awesome in person why does a great job of explaining why he uses chinese factory it's he worked you know he's he worked in that factory it's sort of 
the way he explains it is like that's what he knows. Um, ellipsis crisis. Most of the stuff we buy on Amazon, eBay, are made in China. We should stop lying to ourselves and just admit the world is made in China. Uh, not you know, not everything. Uh, we're gonna look at some stuff today that wasn't. Um, you know, even these Oak Streets are are made in the United States. I I make everything here in Chicago, including the leather the stuff we make is made within a couple block radius. But then again, you know, some leather finishes, I don't even know where some of them are made. So it's possible that some of the components aren't um, American. But the crafting, uh, the manufacture of the boots from Grandstone is all done in China. So we had a uh, request to look at some Truman. And to be honest with you, I haven't really dug into Truman too much. So we'll probably just skim the site here. That's a nice look. Um, we're into boots, though. New horse rump made to order. Let's check that out, too. But also, before we get to that, I think we should just see what they're about, right? Started in 2014, Truman Boot Company got its start in rural Pennsylvania directly after the initial launch sales took off rather rapidly as soon as the company outgrew the small horse barn it started in we needed to move into a larger factory and came up with a short in pennsylvania came up short in pennsylvania in addition we needed skilled bootmakers to move to a state where we were in pennsylvania didn't attract some of those skills so we moved to colorado okay um that's neat The brand is named after the Border Collie uh, Truman. All right. So they're into uh, American heritage, workwear, Western culture, uh, built by bootmakers in the Pacific Northwest. Okay, so they're in Colorado, but they make in uh, probably Washington. That's cool. Okay, so let's get back to... Um, I want to see the MTO. Let's see what their new their new stuff is. Look at that. That is very much like a Pacific Northwest vibe. Sort of a tough guy like logger. Oh, vintage military horse rump. I like that. It's pretty pretty beefy. Oh, Sagara. We can look at Sagara. Boom, it's on the list. So I didn't realize I didn't realize Truman was um sort of Pacific Northwest thing. And that's the leather here. It's almost like a yeah, this is an oiled new buck. Um so new buck leather is uh it's like a suede, it but on the grain. So it's a finer suede, and then when you oil it, you get this nice depth of color. And it feels good. Um, it has like a, it adds like a little bit of luster with that oil. Sometimes new bucks, because they're corrected grain, can look a little flat and lifeless, which might be what somebody wants. But adding the oil gives it a good amount of depth. Well, that's cool. A little spinner. Cool. I like those. Let's see. Let's see what else they're about here. Yeah, this is very Pacific Northwest to me. Look at the shrunken bison. Let's, we'll check that out. And it looks like they have some wax flesh. So this reminds me a lot of like White's Boots. Which is on my list to look at also. Cordmasters? Oh, <laughs> Are you saying how did Ashland get the name? We got the name because the tannery is on the corner of Elston and Ashland Avenue. And I like the idea that Ashland sort of goes through the heart of the city. And then there's an untrue uh, sort of like history of the Great Chicago Fire. And there was, this is not a fact, but people would say, you know, Ashland Avenue got its name because the remnants of the city that burnt down like filled in to like make the street or something like that, which is not true. But I just like these ideas. Cordmasters, is it Cordmasters from Cigara? 
Let's see if we can find. Uh, looks like they got some shell. Oh my god. Okay, that's. We won't. We don't want mid to order just yet. Lord Masters, this is what you have. We'll come back to that. All right, we're going to keep looking at uh, Truman. It definitely looks like Pacific Northwest. I, I didn't realize that. I want to look at this bison. Check that out. So we notice, or I notice, that a lot of my customers want a leather that's unique and different. So we, from time to time, we get Dublin in the bison hides and they sort of have this, this is shrunken bison. So it's a little bit more pronounced and dramatic pattern that you see here, the figuring in the grain here. Uh, when you don't shrink the skin, uh, it, it's a little bit less uh, deep for these valleys, but you still sort of see that visual texture of the bison. It's, it's pretty neat. One of the challenges with bison is it tends to be a little bit thinner than steer hide. So you got to line it with something a little thicker, which it looks like they, they probably did. Or maybe they were able to get super thick bison, which in my experience, it's, it's not particularly thick. But looks looks like a lot of browns, which makes sense because I think people want brown. Check that out. Cognac shrunken bison. This is what I would get. <laughs> It's pretty neat. That's pretty striking. Made to order. I like that. I would wear those. Very different. Look how rugged we get here with the Coach Rambler Indian Tan Waxy Mohawk. I'm not super familiar with this. So that looks like a reverse piece of leather with some crazy, uh, so these are veins, which are sometimes not the best to see, but definitely rugged. That's kind of cool. Looks like they flipped the leather over sort of sanded it down even and then coated it with uh, maybe just like a top coat. That's pretty neat. Waxy Mohawk. This looks kind of similar, doesn't it? Less veins on this one. Oh, there's still some veins. Pretty rugged. And then the gusset or the tongue, which is probably a gusseted tongue looks like is a different leather. I like, I like when they do, when places do that sort of like a different gusset. Well, I won't try to pronounce this name. A lot of veins on this leather, which I, I don't I don't think is the coolest. I don't love the veins. They're just like a chunk. Pretty cool. I, I had not looked at Truman too much before, but that was fun. And let's keep it going to Parkhurst. Um, somebody also requested to look at Parkhurst. So let's see what Parkhurst is about. I, I have seen them um, before, but I haven't dug too deeply into what they're about. Um, I want to find out their story. Uh, idea for Parkhurst was born in Buffalo, New York City, which has seen the unfortunate situations a loss of American jobs can create. It's incredibly important. We do everything we can to support the workers. Um most obvious example is a group of eight skilled bootmakers that work <laughs> 30 minutes away from Buffalo. Uh, they complete 200 steps, human eye handpicking. Uh, so handcraft is very important to them. And they're made in uh, New York State. They want different work. So they're into work boots at a reasonable price point a balance between best price goodyear construction premium components made in usa so that's what they're about which i like 
So let's take a look. Oh, production update. Oh boy. Oh, this is sad to see. Okay, so uh, delays, supply chain. Uh, oh my God, poor guys. Yeah, so it looks like they're having some issues getting shoes made and shipped, which is real right now. Um, you know, for example, we do some of the, uh, we do the belts for Grandstone, which you should pick up a belt from them. They're really, really nice. The leather that we choose or they, they chose for the belts are thick pieces of steer hide, about nine ounces thick, and they're tough to get. So um, part of the challenge for Horween right now, in, as an example, they have a high amount of demand and like a small amount of people that are able to come into work. Um, <laughs> it, they need more employees and then the components are going up in price. It's, it's a tough world right now for manufacturing, uh, getting parts in and things like that. But um, these belts are the leather it took to make these or we're making some now. It's a year to get leather in roughly. So it's pretty tough. So I can see why Parkhurst would write this, this note, which is sad because it's just so hard to get anything right now. Let's take a look at what they got going on. So we got some cap toes, a plain toe here, the Allen. So we got Allen and Richmond. Kind of a small offering amount. So it looks like the Allen is their plain toe. And they've got this specs. Retan, a veg retan from Seidel. So it's probably a combination tan. Chrome tan with a veg retan. Looks to be full grain. Yeah, very grainy. But also like kind of flat. Like, a, not to criticize, but like the leather looks a little lifeless. In, in these photos, this one actually looks a little bit more lively. So maybe it's just the photo. Cool. Full, so it's like a full grain looking um, combo tan leather. And then we've got some cap toes. Richmond veg retan leather from Seidel. The same, same thing. Same leather, different style. So many boots, so little time oyster. So that's a quick look at the, these guys. Let's look at Thursday. Somebody also suggested looking at Thursday, which is cool. I like uh, I like what they got going on here. So I haven't worn any Thursday boots before, but I really like our mission at Ashland actually is to share leather with the world. So I like that they've sort of created this accessible pathway for people to get into the scene a little bit. And I feel like a lot of people might start with Thursday boot or maybe even start with Grandstone, but even the price point, like some of the times I look at these and I'm like, how do they possibly make it and sell it for 199? That seems like a very good deal. Um, so I like that a lot. Uh, back in the day, I think they used more Horween stuff, but today I believe the only Horween that they use is, is this natural Chrome Excel. I could be mistaken on that, but that's, that's my understanding. And it's just a straight up, Nice looking plain toe boot or cap toe boot, cap toe boot. That's the captain. The president plain toe. Their plain toe looks, that shape looks a little odd. Like a little like deflated or something in the front. Probably because it's, they want it a little bit more narrow to be like a little bit more stylish. Something looks odd to me about that. I'll tell you what, though, 
Um, there's a couple other things like they make some leather jackets. Uh, and if the price is, too, yeah, I don't understand how, and I've said this on stream before, there's no possible way they're making money on this at $349. Like the leather itself costs more than that, especially something like this. Oh, natural lambskin. Okay. They used to have natural Chrome Excel. So maybe they changed it up. Let's see. Oh, they must have, they must have figured out what I was saying. It's like there's no way you can make a Chrome Excel jacket for 350 bucks. So they used to have this jacket in Chrome Excel, which might actually be this photo up on the top here. Uh but I guess no longer. Natural lambskin. But yeah, 350 bucks for a jacket like this is crazy. Even even with the non Chrome XL, it's that's a, a deal. But it was outrageous <laughs> with the with the Chrome XL leather in there. My business partner Dan came over to my house the other day wearing these, and I go, "What are what are those? Those are awesome looking." They were sort of sitting at my front door, looking like this. And he's like, "Oh yeah, those are Thursdays. I've had them for a while." He likes them. Uh, I thought they looked incredible in person. These sneakers, and they're 130 bucks. That seems like a deal. Again, like with some of these things, like the photos uh, are odd. Like that looks kind of lame like that. But, you know, this makes it look way better. There's something about the shape that looks strange, almost like the laces are too low. I don't know. It looks weird in the photos, but in person, this thing was crazy looking. I think... Uh, Thursday makes some in the United States and a lot in Mexico. But yeah, like, this crazy deal, be fat. So these Thursdays, and they're not boots, but these were really, really, really nice looking. So I was kind of into that. Let's see what else we got. Somebody was suggesting Crockett and Jones. So by the way, if you're just joining, if you want to see, uh, if you want to talk about any particular brand, let's bring it up and talk about it. Uh, so somebody suggested Crockett and Jones here. Let's look at some men's shoes. Do they have a boot section? No. All boots. Men's boots. So Crockett and Jones, maybe we should go to their, do they have their story or anything? No. A little bit more like European uh, vibe, certainly. Um, a little bit more shape in the lasts. Like you can see pretty obviously here uh as opposed to some of the other stuff that we looked at it was a little bit more like bulbous a little bit uh less refined so definitely a, a sort of dressy vibe that i get from crockett and jones looks like the price point is pretty decent too until we get to the cordovan and man look at that whiskey cordovan double leather sole we should check those out wow all right that's a really nice looking boot definitely more of like um, a little bit more like dressy uh, than, than my personal style especially without the eyelets here I like that and then they have the speed hooks which makes it like a little less dressy. That's interesting. So they got the whiskey, which also the Cordovan prices are going way up, uh, which is kind of scary. So this might be a great deal. I don't know. And they have the color aid, it looks like. What do they call this? Dark brown. So I bet, that might be a little less similar. Maybe it is color eight and they call it dark brown. Pretty nice. That's Crockett and Jones shell stuff. I'm not overly familiar with them, but uh, it's just because it's not like sort of my personal style. But they look really refined and well done. And honestly, this, the price doesn't seem out of line either. Like sh sure, it's a lot of money, but... Um, you're kind of like in the Alden, 
price world with some of these. Yeah, I don't know. If I were going to, honestly, the, the only thing I would really pick up, I kind of like these, <laughs> the Alder shot. I've never worn like a scotch grain sort of thing before, but I like this buckle. Let's see if we can see the brown one. That's cool too. There's also this black boot. Um, where was it? Coniston. Yeah, more brown than the color. Like Maduro. Yeah. Hey, what's up? It's runners. Hope you're doing well too. I kind of like this look too. It's a little bit more rugged. That's probably why I like it. But it seems like they're not into eyelets, which is which is kind of cool. Got this under lighting here. It's definitely a little bit more rugged there. Let's see. What do they have? Do they have like um? They do have a shell quarter of section. Let's check this out because I think. This is a little bit more what they're known for. Got, like a little bit more refined um, from what I've seen than Alden. And then the shapes are, are different uh, of the lasts. Super, super classic. Like I don't know. That's an interesting thing is you know, I don't know how much people are into being super dressy anymore. Like this, this sort of... Everything sort of goes in cycles. This aesthetic might be sort of fading a little bit. But honestly, like wingtips or these medallion toes, I think this stuff looks incredible with jeans. I think wearing those with jeans, especially the color eight, looks really awesome with denim. So I think I'd wear those. It's pretty cool. I, I like I like everything about this. Let's move on. Oh, I was searching uh speaking of Shell Cordovan. I just went on eBay and typed in Shell Cordovan. It's weird that stuff shows up. It's like people must be trying to pick off the keywords or something. So like these Danners are certainly not Cordovan. Alan Edmund Randolph, four hundred bucks. It's pretty expensive. Florsham Imperial, three hundred bucks. That's really expensive. Alan Edmonds Polo Shell Cordovan, 200 bucks. Those are kind of neat. Alden, Vintage Floorsheim. Everything's so expensive. Alan Edmonds, Alden, Floorsheim, Alan Edmonds, Alden, Crockett. Do some Crockett. 925 bucks. It's probably like new. Worn five times in an office setting. You must have changed the laces out too. These are kind of cool. Oh, they're kind of a little bit beat up. They did a nice job polishing it. Let's see. Cherry red. I wonder if that was like a color two or garnet. I kind of like these. They're vintage-y. That's weird. I don't know if I've seen that on the back. I don't know if I've ever seen one of those. So there's some shell stuff. Look at these. 90 bucks. Buy it now. 190. I bought some vintage floor shimes like this on eBay. And they're okay. <laughs> they're like, they're pretty beat up because they're super old. So I don't know if I, I might turn it into wallet or something. Yeah, the the Crockett stuff is a little bit more New York than than Chicago. Yeah, Chicago were unstylish. <laughs> so speaking of unstylish, actually, I I think these are stylish, but they're certainly work boots. You might be familiar with Thurgood uh, Weinbrenner. I believe they're the same company, but they. There's there was a Chrome Excel boot that they did a while ago. I certainly don't have it anymore. But these were really really comfortable. And they're more certainly more work boot sort of stuff, like very obviously work boot. But it was a style like this, like a six inch. 
the way that they have like the insoles and then this uh this wedge outsole is really it's like a little squishy but it's super comfortable <laughs> i'm thinking about most most comfortable things that i've worn uh these are up there and then the price um uh, i wonder if you have to go to like wine burner yeah i wonder if this is like their direct yeah i don't know work boot stuff price points good made in wisconsin check out wine burner and they're good uh people wanted to look at this commando wait indie boot Color 8 shell is think think what the request was. Ooh, Orla, good good uh, tips there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to those today, but we should do this again. <laughs> so, Andy Boot, this one's pretty clean looking, pretty refined with that, that sort of painted edge. I really want my next pair of whatever I wear or buy to be the sort of half sole thing, the commando sole. I like that it's a little sleeker and I want a little bit more traction and a little bit more durability. If it has a similar comfort level to the the leather outsoles that I've been wearing, which to me are the ultimate, I might be a commando kind of guy. But these are great. It's really it's really too bad that it's so hard and I I do it for work, but photographing shell is so difficult. It's a real shame uh, that they couldn't capture this better because I'm sure this boot is insane in person. Like you sort of have to know like a little more than what you're seeing here. But 900 bucks is you know worth talking 300 dollars less than some of the Crockett stuff we looked at before. So I guess it's a little bit of a different price point. Pre-order. Oh, is that just a pre-order? Is that the final? That's the final price. So somebody was asking about those. I like that a lot. I think I would be into the Commando Soul. Uh, Standard and Strange I was looking at earlier this morning. And they have a lot of really unique stuff. Like Yucatan doesn't seem to come up much anymore. Uh, I'm sure it does, but I, I don't hear a lot about it. But those are like, the Yucatan stuff is so pushing the boundary of new leathers and, and styles and stuff. It's pretty neat. Somebody was asking about Cigara, so we can do a two for one here. Check that out. What is this? this is really neat? The leather, the everything about this is is very different. And I like it. So let's read about it. Crossed horse, but that's what it is. Can we zoom in? No. So that's definitely grain. Very grainy. It looks like very much like a veg so it might be kind of firm i think those are cool looking oh ben oh uh, i thought ben designed them they did an interview let's see what the leather is just crust horse butt huh made in indonesia standard change uh, collab exclusive chloe crust i like that I like that everything's tan, you know, even the, the outsole. What do you guys think? I kind of like that one. Now, I've never worn cigar. I've never actually seen one in person that I'm aware of. And then there's some of these like where the, the lacing goes closer to the toe stuff that I'm curious about. It's a little funky though. It's like a little too much. It's a good combo though, the brown and black. This outsole looks strange to me though, if I'm being honest. All right, maybe I'm in like their clearance section. New things. Oh. I guess I just clicked on boots and this is what showed up. Bunch of cool stuff. I bet you those are really comfortable. These loft grins. Crust looks like a patina machine. I bet you it is. Somebody was asking about Ravello shell uh, long wings. And those are great. I was talking about it a minute ago where I was feeling like 
Um, I feel like color eight long wings or even color eight medallion or like any sort of wingtip goes really well with like denim. And I feel like more people are, are going to the casual uh, vibe these days. I think this could make it work still with a casual setting of, of like jeans and a t-shirt. And you don't see a lot of Ravello. That's an exclusive Alden color. So these are special. I wonder how much they charge for it. Oh, made for J. Crew. Super neat. <laughs> Brass Velo. Pretty cool. I only got a couple more minutes here. Oh, yeah. I wanted to talk about Leather Soul because I used to check out this site like every day. They had so much cool stuff. A lot of Alden, John Lobb, a double monk. I don't know about those thousand dollar sneakers there, guys. Uh, that's a nice looking plain toe. A uh, split toe. When shell isn't Photoshop photographed right, it looks like patent leather. I guess it's the, the patent is an imitation of the shell. Like these, these actually, I mean, they're not like perfect photos here, but this at least like looks real. Like sometimes it's so hard because it's like taking a picture of a mirror. So, you know, if, what I've learned, I took a small little photography course online here, but what you got to do is create a softer gradient of the, those highlights. So what you see uh, reflected off the shell because it's a mirror, you need to create a gradient on a soft box. So I have like a big scrim that's like basically just a big thing of diffusion paper. And if you hit light at it um, at an angle, it creates a gradient of that of that highlight. So whatever is reflected in the shell, you can still see the color in the shell, but you can also tell that it's bright and shiny because of this like gradiated uh, highlight going across the leather. You kind of see it a little bit on this shoe, a tiny bit. It was very hard to do. And the shell has like layers of color. So it's and the angle you look at the leather, it changes color. So it's very, very, it's probably like, I would imagine one of the harder things to, to take a photograph of to make it look like what it really is. It's one of the reasons I first started doing video on, on YouTube here is to, to sort of like rock the, the leather back and forth in front of the camera to show you what it looks like. So leather sole is really cool. Let's keep going here. Oh, I want to look at Whites. I wouldn't be surprised if Whites was making stuff for uh, for Truman. I wouldn't be surprised by that. Because it seems like a similar vibe, like a chonk, like really heavy looking uh, aesthetic. So Whites is a lot of work boots, Pacific Northwest. I really like when they do the wax flesh like this. Sitchin read a cool article on Yucatan. I do want to peek at that. Uh, let me see my wax flesh. Where did it go? There we go. That's awesome. And if you're not familiar with wax flesh, this is sort of the reverse side of the leather. Uh, it actually looks like they have different options, right? So it's not all wax flesh. You can choose wax flesh, which looks like this so this is the unintended flesh side of the leather that's why it's called wax flesh and then they finish that in with a bit of wax or resin or, or top coats uh it sort of seals it off but you know when you kick something or get this leather abraded it wears off in a really interesting like funky awesome way it's definitely casual uh, but it looks amazing when it's worn in, especially like a black wax flesh. Let's see. I wonder if I'll be able to find. Yeah. Well, we looked at this. I feel like last time we were on stream, we saw something like this.
anyways, this kind of give you a sense here. Uh, I think Truman was doing it. But I can find the image. See how it's sort of like scuffed up in the heel a little bit there. The way that it wears in on these like layers of color is really neat. It's, it's Orla, good question. It is rough out, but it's rough out that's also finished uh, with an additional stuff. So there's the grain side of the leather, which is the, you know the side where the hair comes out of your skin, for example. And then underneath it, the opposite side is called the flesh side, which is kind of gross. <laughs> but if you, most leathers are intended to be used for the grain side, so they'll finish onto that side. And then if they flip it backwards, they just call that a rough out. Because they weren't necessarily, the tannery wasn't necessarily like trying to do something on the flesh. But these days, like people are getting more casual, especially with something like the wax flesh. A tannery like Horween will fill in those fibers in the flesh to make it a product like this called wax flesh. And it's it's pretty neat. They're analogous, like you could call rough out, uh, you could call a wax flesh leather a rough out. But it's, it's a little bit more precise of a term to call it wax flesh uh, so whites is cool. I'm kind of interested uh, in the whites stuff because I don't have any. I don't like the uh, sort of Cuban heel sometimes that they do. But that looks really good, this plain toe. So they got good leathers. Apparently, they're really well made. I, I haven't had any experience with them. And they just look beefy, which I'm kind of into. That's neat. What else did I? Oh, I wanted to look at Viberg real quick. We got too much stuff to look at. View the service boots. Whoa. Wax Velt. V E L D T. Produced on hides of the orcs antelope from South Africa. What is going on here? That's different. I'd be curious to see this in person. That doesn't look awesome. Oh, my kid's waking up. I'm going to have to wrap it up here. We got some shoes. Ooh, that's kind of awesome looking. I like the plain toe. But I'm boring. Camel hair waxed kudu. Wow. I, I like this one. That's awesome. I've never seen this. I like this one a lot more than that last one. This is also from antelope. South African antelope. Very cool. Ooh, smoke jumpers for the next Thunderdome. What else? Oh, I wanted to peek at Rancourt. I'm going to have to wrap it up here, but Rancourt makes some cool stuff. Uh, we're checking out. I know they do a bunch of different uh, custom things also. Somebody wanted to look at this. Uh, Astro, was it Astroflex? Looks like a, um, a crepe sole. Which I I like to crepe sole. I know a lot of people hate them. But those are really comfortable. I actually might want those just because they'd be easy to wear. Uh, somebody wanted to look at fight, and I've always loved the aesthetic that they've had. Just like a cool vibe. Um, it's very unique. How do I get to the outdoor outdoor slippers? Classics. It's so cool looking. Just how minimalist it is. I really like uh, the look, but they don't have a lot of boots, it seems. Is this a boot? Yeah. Look at that. That's crazy. High top court sneaker. <laughs> All right, Aaron. I got your question here. Uh, somebody want to look at these uh, Cigara Chord Masters. It's got that sort of low lace. 
I don't know if I love this two-tone thing, but I like how chunky they are. Oh, my kid's waking up. All right, we got to go get her. Um, so we're going to do your general question. Uh, see if we flip it back over. All right. Aaron says, I have a general boot question. Recently received several boots from Allen Edmonds and a couple pairs from Thursday. The ADs are great. The Thursdays have caused blisters. It's going to... Yeah, well, if you've worn them more than like a couple times and they're still giving you blisters, I don't think they're the right size for you. I did hit Viberg. Um, but yeah, so the um, Oak Street boots that I was wearing for this Patina Thunderdome, when I for first wore them the first day, they kind of rubbed me in one spot, but the next day was nothing. And I don't think you should be feeling that. Like if they're giving you actual blisters for like weeks, that's not right. So it's probable that you have uh, you've sized wrong. Um, but it's also possible that Thursday just makes too much of like a narrow last, which I've seen before. So somebody pointed out to me something that is eye-opening is... Not every shoemaker is going to make a last that's right for you. So you it just might not be a brand that's that's for you, you know? Yeah. So I would, so on, so I'm a brand, right? If, if somebody ever has an issue with one of my wallets and they come to me and say, I've got this issue, I'm going to do everything I can to help you out, like put you in the right, in the right spot. So my suggestion would be to, to reach out to Thursday and ask them because they're probably going to help you. Um, and that's the best part about this sort of scene that we're in here is like, everybody's pretty cool. Like nobody's trying to screw people over. We just want to like get you the right item, you know, and love the love whatever you picked up, spent your hard earned money on any word on the podcast. We're still, we're still discussing whether or not we want to do it. <laughs> Somebody tried to call me out, uh, on YouTube here when I did that poll, they're like, Oh, of course you're going to release it all next week. N no, <laughs> like we don't. We don't have a podcast. Um, it's something that Nick and I had talked about, uh, but we haven't formalized anything. But I did want to gauge the interest, and it seemed like a lot of people were really interested in that. The cool thing about um, me and Nick is we tend to know a lot of people in the scene. So we can interview people um, from some of the brands that we just looked at today and talk about their shoes and their boots and leather and life and you know like what's up with that person i i find um like for example i'm really into music and i find that if i if i like somebody's music i want to know like a little bit more about them and then if i like who they are as a person i like their music even more so i, I could see it being like an additive process to go like oh that guy's pretty cool i want to hang out with wyatt from grantstone it makes my enjoyment of the product better so that could be some fun stuff we do but um the results from that poll is like Everybody wants a podcast, so we're, we're talking about it still. You know, logistically, I have to figure out how to do it. Uh, but I think we can do it. Um, we just haven't decided whether or not we want to dedicate the time because we're busy. Like you can see, I got this kid uh, is waking up, so I got to roll. But uh, we did it. Another episode of Let's Buy Boots where we didn't buy boots, but we looked at a lot of boots. Uh, so everybody that was here, Aaron, good good question. Oyster, Beefet. Who else was here? Uh, Nicholas Baldwin. I missed your question, but I'm not familiar with the hurricane leather. Orlog, Robert M. Uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. We'll do it again sometime. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and uh, happy May tomorrow. All right. See you guys later. Have a good one.